Albert Hein. Hey Gilbert, what is Albert Hein? So Albert Hein is arguably probably one of the biggest employers in the Netherlands. They're like over a thousand locations. Yeah. Um, they would be considered, oh look, there's a dick on the wall over there. <laughs> uh, they'd be considered uh, a supermarket in, in not necessarily in an American sense, like where you have like these giant grocery stores, or most of America anyway. And, but some of the, they have like a bunch of different kinds of locations. Like uh, they call hypermarkets here, like giant grocery stores, like a Save Mart. Yeah, and um, I think that's, that's what this, this one's no, a big This one. one's still a small one. Oh, well, Medium-ish. Medium. Yeah. But, but there, but there are small ones. The Albert Hein to go. I yeah, noticed. those are like what we they would consider like the closest to a convenience store. Yeah, like uh, Lauren made the point, like a Seven Eleven. But like I feel like they're like more like a bodega, um, where the quality is just a little higher. And yeah, it can, is. Yeah, still nice. So I guess they've been around for since the eighteen hundreds. Whoa, uh, Albert's and, an old dude. Yeah, yeah. So they've been around a long time. But you see these all over the place, um, and they're a real critical way that people go. You know are able to walk and get stuff. There's other ones, Jumbo, Lidl, all the other ones. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, I've noticed just almost, almost every other block has something. Pretty much. It's, you see, what, you do, what do you see? Like most blocks you'll see at least a grocery store of some sort, you, you, if it's not an Albert Hein. Uh, you'll see bike repair facility yeah. usually, like every couple of blocks or a few blocks. Um, yeah, there's, it's pretty extraordinary. Like you don't have it's to wild. go far if something you know, happens. You just, everything's right here. But what I, what, what's what's interesting to me is like the distinction between what you get in an American grocery store versus a the typical one. If you're in like Park Slope or like fancy neighborhoods in San Francisco or you know other parts of Brooklyn, uh, co-op kind of stuff, co type stuff. Yeah, it's that's closer to what these are like. Um, and then the prices are super cheap. Yeah, everything it's, was like super it's affordable. Way cheaper than shopping at Safeway. Way cheaper, and it's supposed to be Safeway, the Vons, yeah, because if they're. Ostensibly, not, they're not big box stores in the American sense. Where right, Costco, right. Costco, Sam's Club would be like a big box store, but our Save Marts would be considered a big box store. Yeah, you know, Ralphs, our Vons, Safeway, Albertsons, you know, Albertsons, uh, where you can find uh, legendary celebrities apparently. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's let's go inside. I'll show you what's what's different. First thing. What are these little uh, iPod touches? <laughs> so these are hand scanners, right? So you can. I don't know how to remove. Oh, you have to scan first to get it. it but you need to, to be in the app. Yeah, you need to have the app scan it, and basically you can scan all your stuff in your grocery cart. You get a little barcode that lets you back out over there, and you can pay for your stuff without having to stop at any of the registers. Um, and they do have. There's one now in Amsterdam uh, versions where you don't have to scan anything. Uh, it's like Amazon stores. Yeah. You know, what are they called? Amazon Fresh or something? No, that's the, like, the that's delivery. The, yeah, that's the uh, grocery delivery. Yeah. And they I do, don't know. Saturday Night Live did their great uh, skit about the I Amazon. Should, I haven't seen it. I should oh, see it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so you want me to just take something and walk out? <laughs> nah, son. One less bit of friction and very common here. Lidl does it as well. Jumbo does it. Um, and they even have cart washes in some of the Lidl's. I should show you one of those. Nice. Where that you put it in and it like disinfects the cart for you. Just for example, right here. So right in the mid, in the very, very, very entrance. Normally when you have like high uh, churn items in a supermarket, like main staples, they'll put them all the way in the back of the store. To make, to you, make go, you walk through. Yeah. Here, the high churn items, the quick grab, like even like, like it's like a hodgepodge of stuff. Quick groceries, drinks, you know, your pastas that, that are very popular, and all the fruits and vegetables and baby foods and, and stuff like that that are very popular are right up front, which is different. And like, I bought a box of uh, Berea, a uh, penne, for the family, and it, this is this is two euros 59, and that's the Checo, that's one of the fancier brands, and like, well, it's a little bit below Berea, but, uh, but it was 3.99 in Safe Mart. And it's two, two euros 59. The euro and dollar are very similar. I think you mentioned that before. They're pretty close right now. Yeah. So you can already tell like how different the food is. Look at the, like the grab and go type stuff. Oh yeah, just it's, throw that in your wok and stir fry it up. Yep, it's prepared. And in it, there is this stuff, but it's a lot uh, fewer and far between. Yeah. And then the prepackaged meats. And notice the quantities are a lot smaller. They're meant for like everyday shopping. Yeah, you're gonna stop by here on your way home from work every day. And just, just like, like, uh, like, if you were to go to Whole Foods, which would be like the health, I would consider it like the healthy equivalent, and get a prepackaged salad, 
You're gonna pay twelve dollars. Yeah, for that. and this is four fifty. Um, and they're all high quality. Like the vegetables and produce are really good. All the prepackaged meats. Like I buy um, the chicken prepackaged, like the sliced chicken that has no no sugar added, which is really hard to find in the United States. Actually, anything with sugar added. And it's it's uh, eight ninety nine for a pound, and it's way cheaper here. Like all the meats. Yeah, I want to make a sandwich now. There's those cheeses, milks, all that stuff is just so much less expensive. And notice we haven't even seen like a crap aisle yet. We're around the perimeter of the store. I do notice. I do notice they do like Coca Cola here. There's there's still a big Coca Cola presence. I mean, I wouldn't say big, like American big, like where there's a sure. ginormous. Every, uh, yeah. yeah. And then, but even the, even the like grab and go drinks are far yeah. less oppressive and far less sugary. <laughs> and it is, it's, it's a hate, it's hateful toward humans, right? <laughs> to, to not, I know you're laughing, but it really, it's, it really is hostile the way that supermarkets work in the United States, right? It's extremely hard to find anything that doesn't have sugar in it. The stuff that doesn't have labels, the nutrition labels, is the stuff that's like inherently healthy, like they were right. fruits and vegetables. Doesn't, yeah, and doesn't need to be. That kind of stuff is very expensive in the United States. It's actually, especially per calorie, like the price per calorie is obscenely high comparatively. So Kellogg's Frosties, but they they have their own cornflakes. I just I had some of their. Ooh, I I haven't tried this. Ooh, I want to get this. Uh, so look how, but I tried those. Those were good. Okay, the, so this, just look, you had to bend down is, to get the crap cereal. Yeah. And every all the healthy cereals. All the healthy. Cereal. <laughs> and, and it's possible, like in a lot of supermarkets in the United States, that people pay, that companies pay to have their stuff at a right, at high level. Right, right, where, where you want it. Yeah. Yeah, Lauren, I've had some of these. Those were very good. The, I'm sure that there's some sort of model to that extent here. And I'm sure these cameras are tracking our eyes and stuff like that, just like other supermarkets and... You know, and even they, they, they put different music on they color code things you know so that it's you know seems more expensive if you play classical music people will spend a little per small percentage more that kind of shit definitely um so there's all kinds of stuff like that but look how hard it is this is the cereal out yeah for me to get down to the the cocoa pops all the way down there yeah and you know, so the good stuff i think look at this is the cereal stuff. aisle yeah that's it a little breakfast. Now, breakfast go to, now think of the American sailor. It's all so the way. So here's yeah. a, like the soda end cap. And oh yeah, you know, a little Pepsi. What's interesting is like the Dutch are famous for having uh, a pretty strong sweet tooth. Right? Uh, yeah, chocolate and yeah, they love uh, chocolate, stroop waffles. Chocolate stroop waffles, hakkaslag for, for breakfast. I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, you know, which is toast with chocolate sprinkles on it. Uh, oh, like yeah. Scott told me about uh, uh, several whatevers ago. And they love like chocolate, chocolate milk, milk, chocolate milk, um, and you know this is all sugar. Yeah. Um, and then, but they still are moving, right? So there's like a, a balance. Riding there. their bike, Whereas hopping most, on a tram. Most of us are sedentary. Hey, here's Pepsi the Coca-Cola. Yeah, not much Pepsi, but a lot of yeah. Coca-Cola. Orange soda. That's yeah, that's, yeah. Yep, that's what I like. This everywhere, man. Everywhere. It's huge in France. And Lauren did note that it's a different color. Yeah, uh, the so logo's different, mm -hmm. and the it's actually it's a it's a uh, it's not as bright and neony the orange uh, simply because she was thinking that it was the food, food coloring related, um, and that they'll they'll use food coloring as a way to attract more people, or it's it may even be a health restriction, like whatever additive they're using to create that food. I, I, <laughs> I, can't, have no idea. I don't know. It's all speculation. But it, I know there's a definitely a marketing factor behind it. So here's your candy aisle. Oh, yeah, candy. Typical nut aisle, some chips, a lot, huge wine selection for a small, smallish. So the, okay. lot, so the closest parallel that I would say that this store reminds me of, and they're all over the place, is the distinction is Trader Joe's. Uh, right. uh, a lot, so, of, lot of their own brand. A lot of their own brand, a lot of bespoke, high quality stuff that's inexpensive. The, huge, the funny thing, though, in the, about Trader Joe's is that they are notorious for having the worst parking lots in all of supermarket world. <laughs> so, right. like, There's I have to get in an accident every every time I go. So, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it, what a huge difference. What yeah. a huge difference. They don't have my favorite M and M's, the peanut butter. Oh, there's the protein. Well, the and even the like brands yeah. we know. Yeah. Look at uh, this. Yeah. So this is supermarket sushi. 
It and looks and I was solid. shocked. Like it, I don't buy sushi looks from good. supermarkets. Um, I've had this. I've had this. Uh, that's pretty much all that that's here that I've had. But they're both really good. Can't go wrong. Yeah, you I'm like little crunchies. I'm gonna, get yeah, crunchies. I'm gonna do the little crunchies. Cool. Please slide it onto my cereal box. <laughs> Now, one of the only downsides I've noticed is there's a bunch of locations well, for all over the place. Downside for me, as a yeah, as a visitor, and I don't have a lot of euro on me. Like some of these locations are cash and maestro only. They don't even do uh, Visa or Mastercard. Mm -hmm. Is that are, are these franchises? No, they're company these... owned. I did look that up. Um, they're company owned. Okay. Just, I don't know. Some locations do it. Some don't. Um, this one, for example, is Cash and Maestro and iData. I can't remember the other one is, the, the other popular one here. There's a few banks uh, out here that are different than U.S. ones. Nobody yeah. cares in Europe. Yeah. Um, but for but Americans start... where that are using mostly Visa and Mastercard. But what's funny is most places in the in, in Europe and yeah. everywhere. Uh, I, take... We haven't run into that anywhere else. Yeah. But yeah, that is kind of odd. So bring a couple extra euro to get your snacks just in case you walk into yeah, one. Yeah, always I mean, when you're in a foreign country, you always carry the local currency, right? I'm bad at that. Yeah, so I've been helping you out with it. That's Thank right. you. But you've been helping me when when uh, my card keeps getting declined like uh, your 10 percent of the time. Your uh, yeah, your aggressive visa security. Yeah, and then I have to like sit and wait for an email like an idiot and yeah. <laughs> get it approved. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, let's check out. Let's let's get out of here. You too, thank you. To go. Yeah, so we're gonna have our hand to go, right? Yeah. So this would this would be like what we consider like the, the quote 7-Eleven, right? Yeah. So you got crap in the front. And this Yum. is like the worst case scenario because we're like right smack in the middle of like maximum tourist, tourist town. stuff. Uh, the only one would be like Domrock would be like the probably uh, the worst Oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but even still, all these juices are fresh. Yeah. They bottle them daily. Amazing. That's awesome. And look, it's two dollars. Like, how much is a naked juice? It's eight dollars. That would be twelve dollars. Right? No, nine dollars. Yeah. So Quite a bit. The bigger ones, and then the, the smaller ones are two fifty, three dollars. Cut fruit. That would be five dollars in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's always it's always really good for fruit, right? So look. And this one's no cash, whereas the last one was yeah. cash and maestro only. I did download the app. I'll see if they'll let me create an account, and we'll see if we can kind of find a loophole where we can add any payment system. Uh, oh yeah, use app. your Visa, but at the one that only takes maestro. Yeah. So look, here's the thing. This probably has the most crap per per square foot of any of the Albert Haynes, right? Like yeah. even the other to-go's that we've been to. But here's the thing: even in Amsterdam, you can choose crap. You can you can crap, choose crap to get, is there if you want. You it. can be fat. You can you can do you can be sedentary. The thing is, is like what is the path of least resistance, and what default choices are you giving people? In the United States, the distinction isn't that we're so bad or all this stuff. It's that. Our default choices are more, are far more anti-human and you know than and, a, and human hostile than pretty much anything else. So even in this fucking convenience store, where yes, you could get crap, it's far cheaper and far easier. It's right in front of the store to get stuff that isn't crap. It's far easier to move as a default. You know, cars are a choice here, and if you're in the rural areas where cars make more sense and you're five miles or five kilometers away from something, you're, and even if there's a beautiful bike lane, most people, guess what, are gonna choose to drive, even here, right? But it's the fact that you can do it, that's a difference. And also the fact that the path of least resistance is doing it. So I told you like, bikes are powerful here because, not because there's all these bike lanes, although that's a big factor, because, but because it's the fastest, most efficient way to get around, not, it's cars take longer, trams take longer, the train takes longer, buses definitely take longer, even when they have captive lanes. Um, for anything under two miles or two kilometers here, like it's definitely the most, the, the most efficient. So why wouldn't you do it? Most people are gonna choose to do that. You've already bumped into it, where you're, we're like right at the edge of where the tram makes sense. We walked uh, uh, one and a half kilometers and the tram we had to wait for the next tram and it only beat us, the one that would have come, only beat us by like 100 meters, right? Yeah. And then a second Pretty one, quick. So yeah, we, like, we, our walk we walked was just fast, right? So, and imagine you're on a bicycle where, it's, where you have a dedicated lane, a much, you know, more dominance in the area. 
it's just so much just flying. Sense. So it's like it, you don't have to choose between one or one or the other, you know, as a city or as a what have you. But what you should be doing is giving people the least friction to making choices that be, that are better for humanity, better for their health, better for you know sustainability. All, there's a variety of things, right? And that's what we have the hardest thing doing in most cities in the United States. That's the thing. Albert Hein. Albert Hein. Kyle, have you noticed that the crosswalks for pedestrians are set back from the corners? Yeah, we're not. Why? We're, why? Because corners are really dangerous, turns out. We're getting hit on those right-hand turns. Yeah, exactly. And it, you could see the pedestrians sooner in both instances, and you have they have time to maneuver and get away. Ah. Also, look at the look at the the turning lane. How the bikes merge into where they're going to turn. Do you see how they packetize in front of the car? This big. Yeah, red that's area. cool. Yeah. yeah. So that they they have to press over, you know, when they're going to a different bike lane on the other side of the street. Um, and that's how they that's how they foster continuity. And then, when we're walking, see how we're, we're getting the ADA noise? The, the beeping. The yeah. beeping, right. And then, we're, I'm calling it the Americans with Disabilities Act noise, but look at, like, each section has, like, safe points, and then, thank you, they stopped at us for the zebras, which you're supposed to do in the United States too, but nobody honors them. And also, Amsterdam is like notorious for people not honoring them. The bike, especially the bikes, the, yeah. the cars more so. But the idea is between like all these gaps is you have, pedestrians have a safe space, every a very short distance. It's not like crossing like Blackstone. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. like a 60. Maybe it just in the middle, you've got a little respite, but and then you yeah, get stuck the, there for and another then five often, minutes. Often those islands, We'll have a light right at the end of them, a mm. dead center in the island. So it, it, it dominates a lot of the space. But they're they're not intending for you to really cross that street. It's huge, um, and it's scary. 104 degrees right now. So yeah. you're not walking so, around. So there's that. You are gonna drive from one spot to another. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and also besides having each little safe zone, the idea, and this isn't always true. You should still look both ways. But the idea is at any given crossing you only have to look in one direction. And the vast majority of people, vast, vast majority of people do follow that here. Um, I would say the biggest things that you need to watch out for, for sure, are bicycles. And then the bigger danger to me is uh, is motorized scooters. Oh yeah, sometimes they're zipping through in, in the bike lane. In the bike lane. And there are exemptions for mopeds and motorized vehicles in bike lanes. And then there's always an exemption for um, disabilities where if you're driving a micro car, like a Kanto or Kanta, whatever, or a Biro or any of those others, um, you can drive a lot of those in the bike lane if you have certain exemptions, even if the bike lane itself isn't exempted. But for the most part, you don't have uh, people, you, what it is is like people will, they'll ignore it still. And that's been a big problem here. So the scooters go super fast and then, so they put a lot of cameras in town lately. Yeah, there's a lot of security, uh, traffic cameras. Yes. And the, the cameras are, are all machine learning based, just like the sensors. So they use um, deep logic to deal with it. And we've actually noticed some of the sensors have been broken. Right. Some of those, you mentioned the little pedestrian areas in the middle of the crosswalk and they're, they're some of them are turning green, but some are staying red even in the middle yes. of the street. Even though the next one is already green. Which is interesting because that to me is a bug because and i'm me wanting to abide by the laws i'm like uh, i've got to stay here till it turns green and then it never turns green yeah and that's the interesting thing like the the laws are we're often thinking of them from an american perspective like so like look at the color of the street right now and this is an older street this will be torn up um and redone shortly um as part of their whole 2030 plan but the color in the, even on the old stuff indicates bicycle priority yeah. and then, so even cars uh, they're considered guests here right pedestrians always have priority especially at um, zebra crossings but if the zebra crossing if there's a so the, the way the traffic lights work here and you see there's a million traffic lights yeah so look at those folks right across the street yeah they're kind of stuck in and you the... see how they have a little traffic light next to them like yeah. lower on the pole that's actually for bicycles. So you have I traffic level lights. Level. Yeah, exactly. So it's at human scale, at your scale. And then there's another one so right there, for, just for pedestrians. Yeah. One's for cars. Sometimes there's one specifically for scooters um, or for motorized like uh, traffic in that way. 
Uh -huh. So there could be like four or five different styles of traffic lights, but they are a, they're exactly the same thing, a red light, a yellow light, and a green light, even for pedestrians, even for scooters. And if you walk through those red lights, you are running a red light. Yeah. But since the idea is that the pedestrian is, has precedence, uh -huh. You can pretty much cross anywhere else, especially at a zebra crossing. Uh -huh. Like you'll notice that there are some like minor curb cuts and people are just crossing there. And that's what the intent is. Yeah. You know? Okay. And it's a, uh, it's a big deal. Like it, to be able to take dominance of an area. And you notice I crossed like right in front of a cop, right in the middle you of the street. Did. I was like, ah. And you were nervous, but the cop didn't care because well, they're busy for one. He did, yeah. I did make eye contact and I said, thanks. Yeah. And they don't care because that's what it's for. Like the city is for people and that's part of what they're doing. They're, they wanna, first thing, the first stage is they're going to eliminate uh, any kind of petrol traffic here. So you need to have a permit, a special permit. No more gasoline. Yeah, no more no more diesel, no more gasoline. Diesel's very popular here. Yeah. Um, and- Electric only for a while. Electric only for a while. And then the next phase by 2030 ideally, they want to eliminate any kind of vehicle traffic that's not special permitted, specially permitted uh, yeah. in, Amst in the city of Amsterdam, the city center. And so the like idea is- Like a delivery car or, yeah. or a uh, uh, service truck. Mm -hmm. And the idea is they, they've been noticing, like, and we've experienced this too, like the pedestrians, the foot traffic, you get squeezed out more and more and more. And when they're trying to have multimodal um, you know, transport, where you have light rail, trains, or at least even on the surface, the light rail itself, the trams, yeah. bike lanes everywhere uh, that are color coded and set apart walking spaces. Like you, what's left? You, you, if you want to make room for cars, it's very, very difficult. But even if you take the smallest car here, well, the micro cars are kind of an exception. <laughs> but let's say like like a, your typical like Citroen C1 or something. That's like a, that would be like a Yaris size yeah. or Scion XA size in, in the United States. Or a Ford uh, Aspire or a Ford what, Fiesta, those Fiesta, sizes. Yeah. Um, you know, how many, you could fit six bicycles in that space, you know, easily. Yeah. And so that's kind of their thinking is, if, if we're gonna squeeze out one thing by 2030, it's going to be the cars. And their, the statement from the government is, we wanna change the relationship that we have with cars, which is going from ownership to some other model that's more conducive to the, allowing vehicles to continue to serve us, because they're important, Yeah. you know? The, yeah, you'll need them to a small extent. Right, but we'll make this city so accessible that driving is actually like fully oppressive <laughs> and, you know, so that people don't have to think about it in those ways. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah. And I love that they're doing it. And you can see it needs it. Yeah. Because they, they're bursting at the seams. This is, yeah. You know? This is a heavy-duty town, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But it's also extremely intuitive, you know? Mostly, like, yes. Like you, you can get around. You can figure stuff out. Uh, you know where to walk. Following maps is generally easy. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you kind of get out of that, like, that American mode where you feel like you're, you are second class because you're walking. Right. You know, or even feel it, or to feel nerve, nervous because you feel like you're breaking some law. And you grew up as a nice kid. Yeah. I grew up in New York City, but I'm gonna talk about jaywalking. <laughs> and even the whole concept of jaywalking is basically a smear campaign. J, sure. A J is a rube, you know, they used to make posters similar to the kind of like the, those highly racist and highly charged posters. Yes. They did the same thing with jaywalkers, you know, to, uh -huh. to frame them as idiots or stupid people. But really, they're the people that are moving, yeah. you know? And they wanted to make the car the dominant thing. And yeah, again, it's like one, become, of, the, one yeah. of the greatest inventions in the United States, this is, I'm being serious, was the interstate highway system. Yeah, connecting all, yeah. all the major towns. And that's, yeah. that's super important, especially if we weren't gonna be train-based. And that's fine. And then there's, you go out into the suburbs, you start to see more cars, but you still mm -hmm. see the bike lanes, you still see this, the, the grocery stores everywhere. Yeah. You know, you'll still see neighborhood uh, restaurants and stuff like that that, that, are, that are still accessible. Wonderful. Whereas here, uh, I mean, in, in, in most of the United States, especially in the suburbs, you're strictly dependent on a car. Yes. You know, you, where, you know, even in the suburbs out, outside, like we could make it, we, could, we went to Keithorn yeah. and we could have made it there by public transit, no problem. But even, yes. And then also, rush hour, I was out at rush hour this morning, it's 12 o'clock, it's noon. Yeah. We're in a major city in Europe, like one of the most major ones, and there's no traffic. There, I'm not saying traffic doesn't happen. Sure. We drove on the highway during rush hour. There wasn't there very was, much traffic. Nope. It's like 
I'm not saying they solve traffic because I don't think anybody really solves it completely <laughs> and it's just a dynamic thing and it can change at the uh -huh. drop of a hat, you know, if there's an accident or what have you. But right. they've done an awfully good job of not making it oppressive. So what's funny is they've gone out of their way to make the city walkable, rideable, public transitable. But it's also a really pleasant experience to drive here. I don't know if you've ever... Even if you're driving. Have you driven in San Francisco? Oh, yeah. It's very, I'm, it's very stressful, right? I'm one of the freaks that love it, especially in my old uh, manual transmission Civic. But yeah. I love the challenge. No, that's fine. It. That, that's, it's a video game at that point. Yeah. But it's still pretty stressful to drive around a city, especially if you don't know it. Right. Um, in, in foreign countries, it's a little different because you're still, you don't really know the, and there's the different laws, laws and yeah. there's different laws Much and signs laws. and all yeah. that. But they tend to be fairly logical, even if you don't speak the language. Yeah. And most stuff is in English here anyway, and most people speak English here. Yes. But, you know, driving in Manhattan, driving in London, uh, those are all very difficult. Um, and, you know, yes. for, for most people. Like, And even well, driving in Brooklyn. Rentable car, rentable scooter right there. Yep. So, yeah, even if you don't own it, you can still rent it. Yeah. So it's like the big argument is like, well, we want our fucking cars. We need our cars. Fine. Have your cars. You can have that. But when you actually do these things, when you make cities more walkable, when you make them more approachable and, and more bikeable and add public transit in ways that don't get you from nowhere to nowhere, but there's actually something to do, something to walk to. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I said yet the other day, like they've solved the last mile problem here in like 10 different ways. Yes. And whereas like most of the United States hasn't even solved the last 25 mile problem. <laughs> like you might have public transit, but then what? Then what? What do you do? You're walking from nowhere to nowhere or it's a parking ride, mm. you know? And that's how you get back to where you where you live. California's high speed rail from Bakersfield to yeah. Merced. <laughs> and I'm, in general, I'm for the high speed rail, but because yes. I think the United States and particularly California is kind of like could, a leader in those things. Could love, yeah, yeah, love to ride it. But I'm not going to be able to use it in my lifetime. Not, um, yeah, not, not, not going any, San Francisco to yeah. Los Angeles like it was originally planned. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. And I just think that these these kinds of places are they actually make it more pleasant for drivers. Like, have you noticed how many parking lots there are? There are a shit ton of parking lots here. Yeah. But have you seen any of them? They're all just that one circular one. The, the Fresno one. The yeah. old one that was actually built in the '50s or '60s here, yeah. when they were kind of like starting to go down that path. Uh huh. Because uh -huh. this city used to all be like America, like it right. was mainly cars. They were they they did have a car dominance at yeah, one point. Yeah, and then in the seventies they had the whole stop the kingdom war uh, movement, uh -huh. which was like cars are killing kids. And then also it happened to coincide with the oil crunch. Yeah, and yeah. their response wasn't to double down on cars; it was to double down on what they were already doing, which was cycling, yeah. and make it kind of a world class thing. So when people are when people say stuff like, "Oh, well, our cities are are this way," no, we actually bulldozed a lot of our cities to make it that way. Yes. Whereas they bulldozed that their city to make it this way. It's a Choice. And again, like in, in the U.S. suburbs, you're not going to take away the cars. Yeah. You know, but you could do stuff you're, like you're going to be far enough from a city that you're going to need at least one. Yeah. Or have a bunch of rentable ones, I guess. Yeah. And you're not going to take them away from people. And, and people are like threatened by pickup trucks, just like people are threatened by mixed-use housing because they don't want, quote, skyscrapers. Because when they think of mixed-use, they think of like New York City yeah. or Chicago or whatever. But you don't have to have that. You can have short, you know, short four rides, four or five. or five stories, brownstone type, that kind of stuff. Yeah. They're very effective. And, but here they don't, you know, in other, in a lot of the United States, people are afraid of that sort of stuff. Mm. And yep. it's changing. There is, there is quite a lot of change. You know, Portland would probably be the best example. Uh, there's Austin, there's a uh, cul-de-sac in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, uh, Ryan something. I oh, that, that like name. planned yeah, town. Yeah, so they have a planned walkable town. Um, yeah. And it's being built from the ground up to be like these communities where you can have a restaurant on the corner, it's a bodega on the corner, um, and have people outside and engaged, you know? And I think that stuff is super critical, you know, to, to living a quality life and to moving and to not letting places like Fresno kill you. Uh, and, I, and I know that's hyperbolic to say, but it is killing people, you know? The, look, I'm still fat, you know, like it's like, it, it, it matters. It matters. It does. It does. I, I moved somewhere and I got fat. And it was because I kind of adopted that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not blaming Fresno in particular. Although Fresno is a perfect scapegoat for it. Because it really is such easy. a good example of everything that I that I take issue with. And then also the attitude of the leadership there. Which is doubling down on like that car culture. And it's fine. Have car culture. 
I mean, yeah. I, it really is fun. Yeah, it, muscle cars are fun. I yeah. can admit it. Yeah. I, you know, driving fun cars is fun, and I'm not. It's not even like a gun thing where it's like, you know, I love my gun. I want to shoot targets or whatever. Like whatever. It's it's like here. They, you actually have a, a pickup Volkswagen truck. pickup truck. Wow. Actually towing a load, which is shocking. They're doing work. Whereas They're working. Most of the trucks here are not for function. You know. Yeah, and. It, People don't want to go from point A to point B uh, in the United States. They want to do it in style and, and in a giant vehicle, which is, again, you know, you're not going to take that away from people, but you can still have the other way. Right. We need the alternatives. We definitely need. And it also, what was it? What was the quote? A rich country isn't one where even the poor people own a vehicle. It's where the rich people still ride public, public transit. transit. So that's uh, that's the take on, on Amsterdam and the Netherlands. And uh, hopefully we can see more of this in the States. Yeah, hopefully. We'll see.